Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to another review and it seemed to me that I haven't done a railroad locomotive for a very long time so I thought today I'd review one of those and uh, it's this of course, the Railroad Black 5 uh, from Hornby of course and uh, yep, yeah, very nice LMS 460 locomotive of course and uh, yeah, I thought it would be very nice to get this one shown to you today so here it is then, here's the model uh, you won't be able to see an awful lot sadly because of all the glare so we'll get it open as soon as possible but first of all, a quick look on the end of the box then first of all you can see the product code which is R2881 LMS class 5 number 5112 which is the running number of course and you'll notice also on the front of the box that it is a DCC ready model although I have since chipped it so it is now running on DCC right well there's no info on the back of the box that we need to bother about so let's get this one open straight away then and uh, this is a bit of a bugger to open uh, here we go. So the first thing you'll notice are these operating and maintenance instructions for the Black 5 and also for Henry. So they've acknowledged at least that uh, Henry, of course from the Thomas series, has the same running mechanism. And this is just that booklet which shows you all the essentials, how to oil, how to remove the body, how to fit the chip. All very useful stuff. I suppose some of it's a little bit self-explanatory if you've done this sort of thing a lot, but uh, nice to have nonetheless. So let's lift up this cover then so that you can see the locomotive. There she is, a very lovely thing. Uh, first of all, we'll have a look at the detail pack, and you always get this little detail pack with uh, railroad locos. Here it is, all it is is two vacuum pipes, and it is always very strange. I wonder why. I wonder what's so important about vacuum pipes. I mean, why don't they send you a regulator to glue on, or I don't know, something else. But very nice to do, you know, if you've got a kid and you want to, you know, do something and put something on it yourself, I think that does add something. So let's start getting this out then, first of all the tender, uh, let's get the tender out then, there's a little hole in the back of the box which makes this easier. Now the tender weighs an absolute ton and I would say it's actually a little bit too heavy. And the reason for this is that this actually comes from the old tender driven days. Now the motor isn't in the tender anymore, it's now been put into the loco, but this is the same tender they would have used. And actually the chassis does have all the old fittings for the Ringfield motor inside it. And all of that is made of cast metal which means this weighs an absolute ton and the problem with that is it eats away at the loco's pulling power because it's got to lug along this great heavy tender uh, so it isn't a, a massive complaint but the loco really isn't very strong because of that heavy tender that it's got to pull and the loco itself is a lot lighter in fact than the tender the, I would say the loco definitely has a lot less weight Having said that, it's quite a nice little thing. It's clearly a railroad model. You know, at first glance, the detail really isn't um, extreme, but I suppose that's exactly what you'd expect. So, yeah, we'll look at that in just a second then, but first, here's a little bit of information about the class and about the uh, Black Fives. So first appearing in 1934 and designed by William Stanier, the Black Fives were produced for almost 20 years which made them one of the most numerous of any British steam locomotive at a total of 842 built. They were initially intended for mixed traffic, so passengers and uh, freight, but more often than not pulled express passenger trains such as the Royal Scot with huge success. Quite significantly, the Black Fives survived until the very last day of steam on British railways and were in fact the last locomotives to haul timetabled trains, before the move to diesel of course. A healthy 18 examples still remain in preservation, but sadly that does mean that well over 800 were cut up and scrapped during the end of steam of course. So there she is then with her tender, and certainly I think from a distance at least, the loco looks like a nice, detailed, quite professional looking model really. But uh, you know, when you take a closer look, you can start to see the cracks in some of the detail. If you do look closely, you can see that all of the detail is moulded, and it does get this sort of plasticky feel when you look at it, or when you see the reversing rod and the pipework. Um, it is a little bit bland, I suppose, but the painting is actually pretty nice. You've got that red lining which goes all along the plate of the locomotive, and uh, you know there's a little bit around the smoke box and a little on the side of the cab there where the running number has been applied there 5112 looks pretty nice but you haven't got any glazed windows or anything like that although I think the handrail on the side of the loco is separately fitted though really that isn't particularly unusual you have got the separately fitted safety valves on the top there but really that's just about it sadly the buffers aren't sprung 
but otherwise the buffer beams really aren't too bad there's a fair bit of riveting on there and I would say they look fairly realistic the smoke box door is pretty good as well it's got the separately fitted dart perhaps it's separately fitted I, I think it is and the handrail and of course also the running number has been printed onto there as well the valve chest or the steam chest I always forget what it is uh, has the red lining on it too and the linkage and valve gear looks fairly complex and uh, pretty nice to be honest while it's running if we take a quick look inside the cab, sadly there isn't any painted cab detail and the cab certainly looks a bit triangy, doesn't it? Nothing wrong with trying, of course, but, you know, 1960s versus the 2000s. Um, you would expect a bit of a development, but it is a budget model, so fair enough. So generally, yes, it's quite a nicely riveted, not badly detailed model, but it does look a little bit plasticky and you can tell that it's budget. The tender is pretty much similar, it's got the same sort of livery with the red lining and the LMS printed very nicely onto the side there, but again the detail is fairly minimal, the undercarriage detail is okay, you know, pretty normal, and uh, the coal is a little bit chunky, it's definitely a classic example of railroad coal. Round the back the detail is pretty good there, there's lots of rivets and probably moulded lampines there as well as more non-sprung buffers, which is a shame. Uh, so yeah, a very basic model. It's probably one of the most basic railroad models, and just because probably the livery doesn't help it, actually. <laughs> you know, if it was in maroon or something like that, it would probably look a bit more detailed. But as it stands, a very plain model, but uh, quite a nice looking one too. So let's go on to performance then and see how she runs. Okay, so there she is then, number 5112, sitting on the track ready to go, and she's going to couple up to four LMS coaches. Now, it is only four because, sadly, that is all she's capable of, and you will notice that even with those four, she will struggle a little bit up the hill. Um, so, again, yep, that heavy tender is to blame for that. On the middle line, I've got another LMS loco, a very famous one. This one is the Princess Royal class, uh, Princess Elizabeth there, number 6201. And she's got some blood and custard coaches, five of those, and she should manage those just fine. On the very inner line, yet another LMS locomotive. This time it's the 8F in the early BR livery, and that one is running number 48154. And she's got a small rake of wagons, and I do like to do a small train from time to time. And today I'm going to be running on my iPad, as you can see there, because all of these engines are DCC fitted, so you won't see me rooting across to the controls, but that's why. And now then, let's get this Black 5 tested at its slow speed performance on DCC. So, yep, yeah, here we go, a little bit of forwards motion then, let's see how she gets on. As you can see, that is pretty acceptable, that is a pretty good slow speed. And, uh, yeah, I don't think you'll get many railroad models that will beat that. That is pretty good, in fact. In fact, I suppose you wouldn't get many models full stop that would beat that, really. That is really not too shabby at all. And she's just leaving the shot now, so I'm going to send her into reverse and bring her back. There we are. <laughs> it's all very slow. But, yeah, I think you get the gist of that. That is super slow. It is a little bit jerky. Um, and when I tested it a minute ago off camera, it was certainly more jerky, so it's better for having done it for a second or two before. But yeah, that's pretty good. So I'm going to speed her up now then and get her to go and meet those coaches. So, yep, let's do that. I've got to try and do this steadily. Didn't really get, <laughs> didn't really work, but never mind. And as you can see, I'm pushing back now with her, with those four coaches, and yet she cannot move them. Let me speed her up a bit, see if she can. No. See, that is a real problem, I think, if she can't manage four coaches. Uh, but either way, let's try a forward, see if she can do it forwards. Hopefully she will. With a little bit of trouble. <laughs> yes, just about. Okay, let's start the other locos up then. So we'll start with the Princess class with her blood and custard coaches. So there she goes, very, very nice. And we'll start the 8F as well with her wagons, a little bit slower, and the princess is just stalled. Go on girl, off you get. There we go, nice slow speed there for the 8F, although that's perhaps a little bit slow. Okay, let's have a running session then. And there are six other locos hiding on the layout today, so your challenge is to work out which one is the odd one out. And that's all I'm going to say. waiting for that uh, black five to come around the corner there. She's actually uh, been sped up quite a bit because she can't make it up this hill with those four coaches if she goes any slower, as you can see just there. There's quite a bit of wheel slip going on.
Brilliant. Yep, yeah, everything's running really well now. No more stalls from the Princess, which is good news. Not sure where the 8F's gotten to. Sure, we'll see here in just a second. Yep, yeah, I can see it. Come with me. <laughs> there she is. Yeah, I like to do the odd small train because I, I do tend to just make really, really big ones normally. So, yeah, nice just to have, you know, six or seven wagons there. Very nice. So here's my ratings then for the Railroad Black 5 from Hornby. First of all, detail 6 out of 10. A little bit disappointing there, even for a railroad model. I do have other railroad models that do sort of beat it hands down in terms of detail. So yes, very simple detail. Performance 7 out of 10. It is nice and smooth, though it is extremely weak as a result of that very heavy tender. And I think if Hornby had sort of retooled the tender a little bit to make it lighter, that would sort of clear up the problem. Character 8 out of 10, I think the Black 5s of course have massive character. You know, the detail isn't great on this Loco, so a lot of that character doesn't shine through. Having said that though, it is obviously a Black 5, and uh, I think most of that character uh, does shine through, so that's pretty nice. Build quality again, 8 out of 10, it is as a result of not being very detailed. It is fairly robust, and I don't think you're going to be able to break it unless you drop it or something like that, which is all you need. Value, I only paid 50 quid for this one and it was brand new at the time, so that is pretty good. 9 out of 10, I'm really pleased with that. So overall, 7 out of 10. Not a bad loco, nothing wrong with it per se, but nothing special either. Hmm, it's quite a nice variety. I mean, it's all LMS, but uh, yep, yeah, a nice variety of freight and passenger stuff, I think. And I love it when two trains sort of cross each other like this. Try and get as much of that as I can. And um, just down there, there's the 8F. Trundling along, feeling a bit left out because she's gone a different way to everybody else, but uh, yep, yeah, oh well. <laughs> There's the 8F, <laughs> still crawling. But yeah, been a good running session this. I've enjoyed myself. Lots of LMS stuff. Whoa. Mm hmm. All good. Okay then everybody, that should just about do it. That was my review of the Hornby Railroad Black 5. If you did enjoy the video, please feel free to leave a like or even a comment because as you know, I do love to hear from you. And also, if you'd like to, you can check out the Facebook and the Twitter pages and they're at facebook.com forward slash samstrains and twitter.com forward slash samstrains. It would be lovely to see you on there, but for now, once again, thank you very much for watching. Much appreciated. And I'll see you all very soon. Cheers everybody.